back for another wine release. We have today the Standing Stone Pinot Noir 2020 from the County Line Block. Um, fun, exciting wine for us to be sharing. In my 10 vintages here, I've only been a part of making two other Pinot Noirs. Um, it's not a variety, obviously on the Weimer side, we've kind of moved away from as a still wine. Uh, we made 2014 and 2019, and now that block we were using, that Magdalena block is all gone. So there is no other stills. So when we had an opportunity in 2020, being such a great vintage, we, we jumped at it because it isn't often in the Finger Lakes now, uh, really, or probably ever, that you get a chance to to conquer the beast that is Pinot Noir in a, in a still red wine. Um, so for those who weren't involved uh, or working with us at the time, 2020, for a reminder, was amazing. Uh, quite a nice growing season, really great harvest season. Tons of dry weather, lots of heat. Uh, so it was really a, a pleasant time to be to be working uh, working vineyards. Uh, certainly, not something we get to experience every year. So um, the the standing stone block is just up right off to the the left of the tasting room, kind of up onto the hill, running right up into the long 414, and then down towards uh, what was Merlot, which is now uh, Fallow. This block was planted by Tom and Marty when they took over that property and started Standing Stone as a, as a proper winery um, in 1994. That was part of their initial grouping of plantings that they did um, in those kind of mid-90s years. Um, I have, we're going to have to defer to Gary when we release this video about the timing of, the, if, of Standing Stone doing a Pinot Noir release, or Jim or Anne. Um, I'm not sure about the last one. We'll have to get, get some numbers on that. But since uh, our involvement there, this is the, the first and pr maybe the only, um, picked on one picking on the 12th of September, quite early, but again with such an early year we were having there. Um, Pinot is an early ripener, as everyone knows, and and then in a vintage like that where we had a lot of we had very small crop on the vines because of the the drought stress, the vines people might remember the very very short amount of leaf area on those plants. Um, they really did struggle a little bit with the with the dry weather in 20. So we had a really low crop, um, but really concentrated as a result, obviously, and really quite beautiful fruit. I mean, I remember holding the clusters, some of the most beautiful Pinot I've ever, ever seen, um, and maybe will ever see <laughs> the way things are going with the, the weather. So um, it was kind of, it was very obvious to Fred and myself and Brianna and everyone on the press pad that we were going to be making a still wine with that fruit because it was really quite special. Um, so that went all into uh, a mixture of destemming, and then we added some stems back in on the on the initial fermentation uh, to provide some nice aromatics and also it helps to stabilize your color and even cool the fermentation a little bit because you're adding some some mass back in with with the juice and the and the destemmed berries um, obviously fermented um, for a couple weeks in tank and then pressed off we had three 500 liter barrels that we ended up with in uh, our, our kind of standard neutral 500 liter uh, Hungarians that we like to use. And then aged for eight months uh, through the winter into the spring, went through malolactic. And then we selected two of the three barrels for this wine. Um, the third barrel, we just didn't quite like how the profile fit with the other two. The other two were really quite uh, distinct and really were harmonious with each other so that was to us kind of the best wine to make so we uh, had to put the rest of the other Pinot to farm red but um, yeah pretty special special wine uh, pretty light filtration and then yeah bottled in July last year so coming up to a year in the bottle not quite um, obviously mid-May release so we got, uh, but yeah so it's had it's had some time to kind of come back together which is great um, by the time we get this out, everyone's been selling it and working with it. So um, 
everyone will have some thoughts about how it smells and how it tastes. But yeah, I think for for us on the wine side, wine making side, it really is quite a cool wine to have. Um, really, just yeah, feels like Pinot, which we uh, yeah don't get to say too often. It's got that kind of a little bit of forest floor, a little bit of dark dark cherries, you know, some of the darker red fruits, which is really nice, but some, again, some earthy, dusty kind of notes, um, which is really exciting. Yeah. Mm. Good tannin. It's definitely, you feel the weight of the vintage. It's not, uh, it's, it's Pinot, but it's definitely Pinot in a slightly, for, uh, for our area at least, of more powerful expression, which is I think something that's pretty distinct to Standing Stone and distinct to the vintage. So, not a lot of it, unfortunately, but that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, but a really, really special wine, and uh, yeah, good kickoff for um, the red wines from 2020, along with the supper, obviously. So, we'll see everyone soon. <laughs>